Hi everyone, Yasas Ke Kalos Irtate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making a lamb and greens pie with homemade phyllo, tender lamb, juicy greens. I'm using spinach today, but you, you can use your favorite greens. It's going to be so hearty and delicious. It feeds a crowd. You get way more for your money, better than making like a whole leg of lamb. That's really going to feed a good, a good amount of people. But with a whole leg of lamb, you can make two of these pies. And who doesn't love that? Because you know that the prices in the supermarket are a little bit out of control these days. So this is a way to just maximize on whatever ingredients you have. Plus it's elegant, plus it's delicious. Let's get started. So I'm using half a leg of lamb today that's been cut up in large portions. You can use a boneless leg of lamb. You can use beef for this or even goat. Whichever piece you want, you need about three pounds. Three to four pounds is perfect for this recipe. And like I said, if you're using the whole leg of lamb, you could use all of it and just make two pies. It's up to you. I'm gonna use my pressure cooker today just because it makes things move so much faster. I'm gonna put the lamb pieces in the pressure cooker and drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top, season with salt and pepper. And I'm just gonna brown it for about 10, 15 minutes on each side just so you can get some color. That also does help deepen the flavor. When I flip the pieces on the other side, I season those as well with salt and pepper. Then I go ahead and I add some garlic. So about five, six garlic cloves that have been grated. Just put them in there, try to get them towards the bottom. I forgot to say that the machine is set to the saute setting and I like to set it for 20-25 minutes so that way it stays nice and hot. You could always add more minutes as you're going. And then I just add a cup of water to this. I put the lid on and I put the vent to the sealed setting and I pressure cook for 40 minutes. If you're using smaller cuts of lamb, you, you might wanna start at 25 minutes and then check it and you can continue to cook it more if they're not done. You want the meat to be falling off of the bone. If you don't have a pressure cooker, this is an instant pot, um, you can do this on the stove top, nice and low and slow. You would brown the meat over the over medium high heat, just like we did on the stove top, then add more water. You need more than a cup of water. I would put enough water for it to go about three quarters of the way up you know, from the meat. You want it to be immersed so it stays nice and soft. And it's gonna take about an hour and a half over medium heat nice and low and slow on the stove top for the meat to be nice and tender. It might take two hours, it might take one hour, it depends on the meat. Then once that's done, you wanna let the meat cool completely and we're just gonna shred it. Now, if you're using the pressure cooker, once the, it's done pressure cooking, let it, let it naturally release for about 20 minutes so that way you don't have to release this, the, the, the vent and have steam and splatter all over the place. I like to do it low and slow take the meat out, let it cool, and then just go ahead and shred it. But while the meat is cooking, we're gonna move on and we're gonna make the crust for this, the pie crust, which is so easy and simple. All right, so homemade phyllo is so easy to make. This is the same recipe that I use every time. It's the one I use to make my homemade uh, spanakopita recipe. If you don't wanna make homemade phyllo, that's perfectly fine. You could use store-bought phyllo instead. The best one to use for this is a country phyllo because you want it to be nice and hearty. That would be a number 10. I have one on the side because I'm making a, another recipe um, right after this video. Anyway, we start with the wet ingredients, which is a cup of water. You want it to be lukewarm water, and that's 250 milliliters. We need a teaspoon of vinegar. This helps it stay nice and tender. I have red wine vinegar. You can use white vinegar. A heaping teaspoon of salt, and about two tablespoons of high quality olive oil. Of course, we have really high quality olive oil in our shop on the website if you want to head on over there later on and get some about two tablespoons of that. I'm just gonna give it a nice mix. And then I have three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. This is 500 grams. Just add all of that in there. And you could do this by hand. You don't need a mixer to do it, but since I have one, I like to use it. Less work. <laughs> And we're gonna need this for about four or five minutes or until it all comes together. If it's looking a little bit dry, what you're gonna to wanna to do is add a couple tablespoons more water, lukewarm water. If it's looking a little bit too wet, a couple of tablespoons of all-purpose flour until the mixture comes together and it's nice and soft and tacky. Thank you. 
Then just go ahead and lightly grease a bowl with some olive oil, toss the dough in there, and set it aside to rest until the meat is ready. This can rest for about 30, 40 minutes. You could also make the dough a night, the night before and leave it covered in plastic wrap in the refrigerator. The more it rests, the easier it is gonna be to work with. Okay, so we could also get moving on the rest of the filling. So we, we're gonna need one onion, medium or large, whatever you have. Go ahead and finally chop it and put it in a pan. And we're gonna add about three to four tablespoons of olive oil to the pan with a little pinch of salt. And I'm gonna put it on the back burner over medium heat until this is nice and soft and golden. It should take about eight minutes or so. Okay, while the onion is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and thinly slice scallions. You need about four to six scallions, also known as spring onions or green onions. And you wanna get all the way down to the roots. Use the whole onion. And you wanna make sure that they're nice and clean, so have a bowl of cold water handy nearby. Put the onions in there. And any dirt that's trapped in between the leaves is gonna sink down to the bottom. If you notice that the water is extra dirty, you're gonna to wanna to lift them out, put them in a strainer, um, throw that water away, and then dunk them in a few times in fresh water until the water runs clear. You never wanna pour um, the bowl through the strainer, like, you know, like this. <laughs> because then all of the dirt that's on the bottom will end up right back onto the onion. So just lift them out and put them in the strainer to get rid of that excess water. And of course, the best place to do this is in the sink, not on the counter. I'm just doing this because it's so hard to move these cameras around once I have them set up. Okay, these scallions are pretty clean. There's hardly any dirt in the water. So one rinse is good enough. I'm just gonna get rid of that water and clean this area up. Next, I have 150 grams or six ounces of feta cheese. I always tell you to get feta cheese in chunks. It's superior to the crumbled quality or the crumbled variety that's, sell, that's sold in the supermarkets. Make sure you get that. I have a little chunk of graviera cheese. Graviera is similar to Gruyere. You can use white cheddar if you can't find it or any sharp cheese that melts well. Mozzarella would work because you get a little bit of stringy texture in the pie, but there's not much flavor in it. This has a lot of flavor. So if you can't find a Gruyere cheese or Kefalograviera, which is the Greek cheese, uh, you can use Parmesan. And just go ahead and grate that. This is 100 grams about. Is anyone really precise when they measure cheese? I always, I always put more than a recipe calls for, even my own. <laughs> And a little tip if you don't already know, the best way to wash cheese off of plates or graters or anything like that is with cold water. If you use hot water, it cooks it on. I don't know if you knew that, but we had a restaurant for 10 years and we found that out. <laughs> so once the onions are nice and golden, then go ahead and add the scallions and just warm them through for about a minute or so. And then we're gonna go ahead and add the spinach. I have a pound of spinach, but you could use your favorite greens or a combination of greens including spinach, collard greens, mustard greens. Mustard greens tend to be a little bit tougher, but whatever your favorite greens are, whatever you have on hand, that's what you should use. And I always have spinach, baby spinach leaves is what I always have. So I'm gonna put them in in a few batches. As soon as each batch wilts, I'm gonna add a little more spinach until all of the spinach has cooked down. And I am gonna season each batch with salt and pepper so that way there's lots of flavor in the filling. Once the spinach wilts down, and you wanna do this over medium high heat, standing there mixing constantly so all of the liquid can evaporate, then go ahead and take it off of the heat and you can transfer the spinach filling into a big bowl and add your cheese. You could add the feta cheese, just crumble it in there, the kefalograviera or whatever shredded cheese that you're using. Mix it all together and then set it aside. Then it's time to add the lamb. So once the lamb is done cooking, you wanna let it cool completely, but if you're in a hurry like I am, you can use two forks and just, can, and just shred it up with the two forks, take out any pieces of fat that are on there, any hard pieces that you don't want in your pie, just take those out, shred the meat up, and then mix it all together in the big bowl. 
taste it and adjust the seasoning, like add a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper. I did need to add a little bit more salt and pepper, mix it all up and the filling is ready. I also added a teaspoon of dry dill, dill and spinach and lamb go so good together, but mint also goes really nice with this as well as fresh parsley, so it's up to you. Now I pressure cooked, I think, I think it was for 40 minutes in the beginning and some of the meat still seemed like it needed to cook a little bit more so I pressure cooked it for an additional 10 minutes so I want to put that out there. There is a little bit of uh, juice in the pot. I'm going to discard that but you can use that to make a nice pilaf or something like that, nice rice rice dish. It d does have a lot of flavor. It is up to you. You could even boil some potatoes in that if you want. There's just a little bit in there, not that much, about a cup or so. Anyway, now it's time to make the, the phyllo part and put the whole pie together. Make sure your oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So I have a 12 inch round baking pan that I'm going to use before I start rolling out the dough. I'm going to grease it with some olive oil. I'm just going to use my hands. If you're going to use a 10 inch round baking pan, your pie is going to be much thicker. I do recommend a 12 inch round if you can find it. Otherwise, you can use a 9 by 13 inch baking pan as well for this. And the dough is nice and soft. I'm going to cut it into two portions. One portion should be slightly bigger than the other because it's one, the bigger one is going to be for the bottom and the smaller one will be the top portion. And since the pan is 12 inches round, I'm going to roll this out maybe to about 15, 16 inches in diameter. So you want to lightly flour your work surface and the top of the dough. And if you continue to turn the dough as you're rolling, it'll stay in the shape of a circle. And once dough has a chance to rest, it just rolls out so easily. The fresher it is, meaning the fresher made that it is, um, what happens is it starts to contract while you're rolling it out, so you just want to keep that in mind. You can make this dough a day ahead of time, like I said earlier, and keep it stored in your refrigerator. And then an hour before it's time to roll it out, leave it out at room temperature, an hour, hour and a half, however much time you have. Now traditionally in Greece, they don't roll out with regular rolling pins like this. They have big, long... Um, wooden rods that they roll out with. I don't have one and I'm showing you that you can still get the job done. So if you want to take a little bit of dough and just like roll it this way, it rolls out bigger and faster this way. And if it's starting to get stuck, you could just add a little flour. The less flour you add, the more tender your pastry will be. Okay, so it should be about an inch or two bigger than your pan, so that way you have nice crust to work with. You could fold it in half and then put it in your pan, or you could fold it over the rolling pin and then roll it into your pan, whatever you're comfortable with. Keep in mind that the more you work with pastry dough, the easier it's going to be. It gets so much easier to handle it. It might be tricky the first few times, but don't worry, you really can't mess this up. It doesn't even have to be a perfect circle, you guys, it's fine. If you want to throw some breadcrumbs on the bottom, you can. Uh, rice is something that's trad traditionally used, as well as little tiny pasta like trajana if you have, or couscous, you could do a little layer. I'm just not a fan of pasta in savory pies. It's up to you. It is traditional. It's something that's usually put into pies like this. You would use about two to three tablespoons or so of couscous. Couscous would work, or trajana. The sour trajana is better because it has a lot of flavor. But go ahead and put the filling in one flat, even layer. Smells so good already. And now we're going to roll the top portion. And the top portion should just be 12, 13 inches in diameter, the same size as the pan. put that over top. Then I'm going to drizzle with lots of olive oil. You could use a brush or your hands and then we're just going to crimp the edges. You could crimp them or you could just gather them together like this and just 
make a very rustic edge. I just like to kind of fold them into each other. It creates a beautiful crusty border. These are gonna be crisp and hearty, nothing fancy. Needs a little more oil around the edges. And then I'm also gonna cut some holes on the top. I'm also gonna make them a little bit decorative. That way the steam can escape and it'll look more like a pie too. Instead of doing this, if you wanna score the pie into serving pieces, so that way it's easier to cut later on, you could do that. You could sprinkle the top with some sesame seeds or even a little bit of salt, but that's it, it's ready for the oven. The oven is preheated, like I said before, to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about 200 degrees Celsius. It's gonna bake on the center rack uncovered for about 55 minutes to an hour on, or until it's beautifully golden all around. Once it's done, you wanna take it out let it sit at room temperature for about 15, 20 minutes, and then it'll be ready to serve. I'm gonna clean up and get everything ready, and then I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it comes out. All right, so the pie is ready. You do wanna let it set really well before you slice into it, so that way it doesn't fall apart. Before we move on, let me say that it took about an hour for this to be completely done. It could have even gone a little bit longer. If you're not adding any pasta or breadcrumbs to the bottom, it is a good idea for the last about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes or so to move the, the pan down to the bottom rack. So that way, if you have uh, the heat coming from the bottom of the oven, it crisps up that bottom crust. So that way it's not soggy at all. It's up to you if you want to add the pasta like we talked about in, you know, while we were making the, the filling. It's up to you if you like that texture or not. Like I said, I'm not a fan. I don't mind the filling being a little bit moist and juicy. I prefer it that way. Then you wanna let it set, like I said, and then carefully transfer it. I really like to serve this on a big cutting board. I think it's rustic already, it just looks so pretty. Make some tzatziki, a nice salad, and it's a perfect meal. It's just gonna be ready to be served. Time for the taste test. Mmm. So much flavor. That spinach makes the filling so juicy. The onions and the scallions add lots of great flavor. The crust is so hearty and delicious, nice and thick, just exactly the way I like it. Even though the bottom and top layers are a little bit on the thinner side with that crust, I like to cut it off and dip it in tzatziki. That's how I like to eat it. I think you guys are gonna love it. The exact measurements are on the website, dimitrosdishes.com. If you wanna learn how to make my spanakopita, click over here and I will see you right over there. Yes, us.